Amen. Amen. Welcome once again to another week of At the Table. I minister Jerome Waters. And to my right, I have Sister Bertha King, Sister Erin DeBose. Amen. 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 Um, before we start, we're going to have Sister Bertha King to lead us in prayer. Okay. Our heads bowed. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this day, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for our rising this morning. Yes, and we God. thank you, Lord, for watching over us all throughout the day. And, Lord, we pray that as we attempt, as we do our at the table tonight, Lord God, that you be, let us put ourselves aside and let you take over, Lord, and let your word come through us, Lord, for those that are out there listening on YouTube and Facebook, Lord God. Thank uh, you. We Lord. pray that this... Uh, at the table go well and that we bless someone out there and touch someone's heart, mind, and soul, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus Amen. Name. Amen. 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 And on behalf of our Apostle Robert L. Williams and First Lady Dr. Sarah Hurt Williams, um, we would like to thank everyone for joining us tonight. Um, we will be continuing on, on our study on counting the cost. As we know, it's always a cost. Um, to following Jesus. Uh, we don't walk this walk um, the way we want to walk it, but we are walking according to his word. Amen. 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 And one of our scripture is going to come from the same scripture that we um, did last week, which was Luke 14, 28 through 30. If we can get that. Amen. Luke. Okay, Luke 14, 28 through 30. Yes. Says, For which of you designed to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it began to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Amen. Amen. Finishing strong. Counting the cost. Counting the cost. Um, it's two questions I want to ask concerning counting the cost. And a lot of times when we when we think about counting the cost, we only think about the things that we have to go through. Um, sometimes we want to take in consideration of the things that others have to have to go to go through. So one of the questions I wanted to um uh, ask tonight was how do counting the cost impact or affect those around us? Amen? Amen. Well, I think it can have a positive or a negative impact. You know, it just depends on the people that you are trying to attract. So, for example, when I began to take my walk with God more seriously, People would tell you, oh, you lose friends, you know, you lose people. People don't quite understand your walk. Sometimes it makes people uncomfortable. Let's say if you Amen. used to be a drinker or a smoker. Now those people don't feel comfortable being themselves around you. Mm -hmm. So you'll find yourself losing people. But another cost associated is that you gain people. Amen. So when you take your walk seriously, like when the Bible says, they not to assemble yourselves, right. you're going to gain family. Amen. And... Like with the Good Friday, I like when you said it's not a traditional family structure. There's going to come a time where your family becomes those people who are walking with you, Amen. who are engaging in a righteous walk. Amen. Those are who becomes your family. That's who becomes your support system. So you gain more than you lose. Amen. Amen. And sometimes it's like, you know, while you're walking, trying to walk your Christian walk, you, know, you find yourself associating yourself more with the people that you're around that are more like you. And you eventually sort of peel away, you know, like peeling a banana. Exactly. You kind of peel away the people that's not for you because they're going to eventually see, okay, I can't get her to go to the club with me. I can't get her to drink with me anymore, so I'm going to find somebody else. Mm -hmm. If they see that you're really true about your walk with God, that's what they'll do, and you're going to have to worry about trying to, Tell them, okay, I can't do this, I can't do that. So, you know, the word will speak for itself. What are some of the positive ways, though, it has an impact on people or affect people's lives? 
Um, we, we know sometimes we can lose a lot of people um, when, when, when we first get saved. Mm -hmm. Because you got to understand, we're walking this life with people that are like-minded like, like we are. You know, uh, and they're not ready to give up the way they live it because you giving up the way you live it. And sooner or later, those two personality personalities going to clash. You're going to have one want to do one thing and the other want to do another. So eventually they're going to clash. Right. I would say, and it's probably really no nice way to say this. But the quality of your circle will increase. Mm -hmm. I want somebody who can get a prayer through. Mm -hmm. So the positive of it is that you're putting yourself in a stronger circle where it matters. Mm -hmm. You know, like I remember thinking, I can't imagine that club and I can't imagine that partying. And it was kind of uncomfortable to have to tell people, you know what? I'm going to sit this one out. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to the club today. Mm -hmm. And... Once you say it so many times, people stop asking you. Right. So it got easier, yeah. you know. Amen. I was never on the call list for the club. It was just like, okay, we already know she's going to say no. Mm -hmm. But my new circle and my new uh, knit of family had power. So when I go through things, it wasn't just me complaining to folks who really didn't believe in God and had nothing positive and no encouragement for me. Mm -hmm. I'm complaining to people who can show me in scripture why I should be encouraged. Showing me, you know, you're going to go through things, but here is the end result. Amen. So the power increased. Amen. And not only for other people to get a prayer through for me, but eventually I was able to get my own prayers through. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Not just that. We have to realize that we're not the only one making sacrifices in this walk, right. especially when we're dealing with a uh, family member, mar if you're a married, uh, married person or you have kids. Um, it's sacrifices that a family make. Uh, um, it, it's a sacrifice that a family make. I gave an um, example earlier uh, to the ladies that today, um, of last week was my uh, 18th an anniversary. And... I was given a phone. I was I, I received a phone call and I had to speak on that Friday, which was my anniversary. I, I didn't even think I didn't even think to look at the calendar or look at the date. But before I knew it, I just said, "Yeah, I do it. I, of course, of course, I do it. Of course, I do it." And then I just happened to look at my calendar and I said, "Hey, oh man, that's 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 my anniversary, and that's my anniversary." And I was like, "Oh wow!" So I I, I looked at my wife. I said, "Well, you know, I can cancel it." Uh, you know, I can counsel it because I know we, we had plans to do something for our anniversary. But she said, she said, no, nah, baby, don't don't counsel that. Don't counsel right. it. You go ahead and go and do what God have you to do. And it made it made it that much easier. Yeah, it, made it, easier. it made it that much e easier to serve. And we don't look at the sacrifices that others are making for us right. in the ministry when they're also in it with you. And it makes it makes the word flow it makes the word really flow and you can do the, the you're always going to do it with confidence, but it, it instills more confidence in you right. when, you know, those that are around you are, are you know, are happy and, and, you know, and are pushing you forward also. Right. So it, it, it's always good to have that type of support. Yeah. And, and like you said, it is good to have that support, you know, not just. With it being your anniversary, other things that come up, you know, that you may have plans to do. Like when we go on a lot of church appointments, and um, you know, my husband is a real stickler. You know, you always y'all always going <laughs> here and there. You know, but then if I say if I say, well, I'm not going to go tonight, he said, you're not going to church. You need to go on and go. <laughs> you know, so, so I that that's him. My living holy is kind of, is rubbing off on him, so mm -hmm. that he's not stopping me, but he's encouraging me to to continue to go. Amen. 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 I just think when we make that choice, it can only have a positive effect on Ooh. other people. Amen. Even the people I told you that I no longer club, I no longer hang around. Mm -hmm. I've had them reach out to me. Hey, can you pray for me? Hey, I have this engagement going on. Can you do the opening prayer? Okay. Like when people know that you are living a certain type of lifestyle, even if you can't be there for every moment that they have, mm -hmm. if you can't participate in everything they do, for those things that count, they'll remember you. Right. You know, so you just, you have to remember. And I was even speaking about uh, the example with my nephew. I don't have kids. I have nieces and nephews, great niece, great nephew. 
and anything bad they do, <laughs> they say, I get it from my auntie. Speeding tickets, oh, I be speeding good. I, we used to ride in the car with auntie. She mashed the gas. <laughs> everything they do, they got it from me. Mm-hmm. But as they grow up and they see that I'm changing and I no longer do certain things, like my nephew had a, um, a car wreck. And his mom was concerned. You know, I used to be hot-tempered. So I text him, hey, calm down. Get the license plate number. Step out of your car. Wait for the police. Mm-hmm. And he texts back, I know, auntie. I'm praying about it. I'm not going to do nothing crazy. You know, like, mm-hmm. it rubs off. Right. So yeah. when people see that, okay, it worked for you, right. it's actually a good thing that I was such a huge wretch. Because now people are like, oh, wow, it mm-hmm. worked for you? Mm-hmm. Okay, let me see what it does for me. Amen. And you know, Amen. people are uh, watching you. Mm-hmm. That's why right. so you never know. So that's why you you have to live the life the right way and be doing the right things because at the very moment that you decide I'm going to step away, mm-hmm. then somebody's going to see you and that's going to be the first thing they throw up at you. Well, mm-hmm. she's supposed to be so this and she's supposed to be mm-hmm. so that. But people are watching you all the time. All the time. All the time. Amen. Amen. But check this out. It's a... <laughs> And this is the thing. It's a reward for those who support those in ministry, mm-hmm. especially your family. Um, I was uh, reading over in 1 Corinthians 7 and 14. And we want to see some of the, be- the benefits that others gain from, whether you got a, a saved mother, a saved father. Somebody in the household is saved, so somebody in the household is praying down some temper. So, mm-hmm. so, right. so it's always a, a benefit, but I want to read that. And this is coming from the New Living Translation. For the believing wife brings holiness to her marriage and the believing husband brings holiness to his marriage. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, your children would not be holy, but now they are holy. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. That, that, that is so powerful. Now, this, not, this doesn't say that because I'm saved, I make you saved. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it does say that because I am saved, this house is blessed. Yes. Amen. That this is where the spirit of God is laying it. This is where the spirit of God has set a hedge around your house, or a hedge of protection around your house just for that one that's righteous in that place. And that's and, and, and that's big. So it's always a, a benefit for from people that's in your circle that, that that's around you can always <laughs> benefit just for you. Knowing God, so it's always good to get close to your people of God. If you if you have somebody that's close to God, you get close to them, right? Uh, uh, until some of that can rub out on you, so you get close to them, and you you'll find yourself um, looking at them, noticing them, noticing them them doing different things in <laughs> type of ways, and sometimes that encourage the next person to uh to 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 want to uh you know just to even explore the idea of being saved right right yeah. a lot of times we are a person's example right so just the way you know back in um before the crucifixion they had the blessing and the benefit of having Jesus as a living example mm-hmm. for some people we're the example that they get to follow wow so if you say hey i believe in god but then you're riding in the car with your friend and you're cussing everybody out in traffic mm-hmm. and you got your finger out the window. And, <laughs> you know, things I'd be guilty of. Yeah. If you can't control that, you're the example. Right. So when they see you do it, they think it's okay for them to do it and still be blessed. Amen. Hey, she's a Christian and she cussed everybody out. I can cuss wow. you out and still go to heaven. Wow. Mm-hmm. wow. You know, so we have to be very mindful that this walk is bigger than us. Exactly. It goes way beyond just what we do. I think about my grandfather who was a, a pastor, uh, several of his brothers who were pastors, and I thank God that they prayed over us. Mm-hmm. Without that example, I probably would have still been out here doing whatever I was big exactly. and bad enough to do. Mm-hmm. But even if it doesn't take hold right then, those examples plant seeds. Amen. So as people go through things, they remember how you handled it. Okay, what did granddaddy do? Right. I remember when this happened, you know, he didn't snap and go off oh. and lay hands on nobody. <laughs> he, you know, he prayed for them more. So we're examples. Amen, 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 amen. amen. And we want to also remember, counting the cost don't, does not mean neg- neglecting your responsibilities. 
um, you know, sometimes uh, we can get that kind of confused. Count, uh, counting the cost and neglecting your responsibility. Uh, you know, my, my son, he, 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 played, he played baseball and we signed him up, read the, read the contract. Contract said you got to be to practice. This way you got to be. If you don't, if you're not at practice, you don't play. So I'm responsible for getting him to practice. Right. Now, if something comes up that that any any activity that surrounds God, if something comes up at that moment, um, and I say, okay, we can't do that, son. You're gonna have to forget about that. God's calling. I, I got to go do this for the for the church, or I got to do this and do that. So we're breaking a promise, and and, and we gotta understand God is the inventor. Of, uh, of a co a covenant, mm -hmm. um, creating covenant and vows. So once you sign that co contract, that's a covenant that we had with that baseball team. Right. And it wasn't just about him, mm -hmm. but it was also about the team. Mm -hmm. But my point, but my point is, we run and we do everything because it seems that it's of God that we supposed to do it. But we right. need to recognize what God is calling us to do in what right. area he's calling us to do at that time it's probably an area that hey by being there with your son you need to minister to him in that way because right. did, did this creating him as dad cares that much that i know how much dad loved church and i know how much dad loved, and dad cares so much that he wants to be here for me and make sure that i get what i need but this is catering this is this is just a, just a father you know, um, being there for his son, just like God is there for us. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to, we don't want to neglect those things because we're so busy. Um, I guess what I would say, we're so busy sometimes trying to build, uh, our reputation up. Mm -hmm. You know, we're trying to get to where we need to get to, you know, if you want to, if you have high, um, high goals and sometimes we'll put our high goals above all those other, all, yeah. above our kids and not recognizing Hey, this is what God has put you in charge of, right, right. and you're over. Right, and then we also have to remember that God is not the author of confusion. You exactly. never know what your assignment may have been at your son's baseball game. Exactly. We're not confined to the four walls of the church. Wow. Right. God gives us assignments all throughout this That's world. Right. That's so it. So when you make commitments... It's important, you know, and I, I used to be that way, like, no, I'm going to do this at church, this at church. And I realized my assignment might be at this place I just turned down. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If this is a, um, a a special occasion, like when you look at the Bible and it tells the husband to, to love his wife as he loves the church, you have to be able to equally distribute your love. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to balance it out. It's not, hey, I can never do anything for you, you my family, but I got to be at church here, 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 here. Mm -hmm. That will make people hate the church because they feel like it's pulled you away from them. Exactly. You have to have good balance. <clears throat> God never said, hey, you can't support your family. In order to support me, you have to never do anything for anybody else. That's it. You have to figure out the balance. Mm -hmm. That's it. Because again, he's not the author of confusion. Right. And your children, when it says, you know, for us to honor our father and mother that our days be long, how can you honor your father if he never there? Yeah. Exactly. So you have to have to find that healthy balance. Amen. 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 And a lot of times you don't know who you may impress upon who you might impress the way you are. Not that that's your intention to go out and and stand and say, well, I'm saved. You know, you're going to make a big sign walking around saying I'm saved <laughs> and carry a big Bible Amen. with you everywhere. Amen. But the way you carry yourself, you know, the way you act, the way you, you know, perform in front of other people, the way you are, because you know who you are, if shine, your light shines. So you don't have to say anything to tell people, mm -hmm. you know, I'm saved, I'm a Christian, I go to straight life church, God, mm -hmm. the husband. You don't have to do all of that. Mm -hmm. But if you are a true, you know, if you're a true child of God, right. you know, your light is going to shine and people are going to be drawn to you. Right. You know, they're going to draw, you're going to draw them to you. And those that are for you will be for you. Amen. Those that are against you will be against you. So, because they're going to, they, they almost can't help. They see that light shining. And they're going to wonder, what is it about her? Mm -hmm. You know, right. I want to be like that person. I want to act the way they act. I want to, 
you know, do the things they do or stop being the person that I am and grow myself and better myself. So, Amen. Amen. And it was so powerful what Aaron just said, what you said. Um, I actually had that written down. Um, let's not keep God in a box. Mm -hmm. We try to keep him in this area confined to just a building or a church. And we, we keep him in the box. And when we keep him in the box, we're, we're, we're not able to take him anywhere or, you know, on our jobs. And because we got him so confined to just this box, which mm -hmm. is just a building that when we come and worship, this, mm -hmm. is, this, this is our meeting time with God. And this is the only time... We meet with them, and we can keep them in the box as if God can't be at a baseball game and, and, and watching over you. Or you never know, like you said, you never know what's the situation that's going to go, that's going to need you in that place at that time. He's everywhere. He, he's everywhere, you know, and tradition. Tradition can hold you back. Like um, I, I think you made the comment last week about tradition. Tradition can hold you back from serving yeah. God. You can get caught up in, so, in, in tradition so much that... It's, it, it's, it's just your routine. This is just what we do. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to break that tradition. Mm -hmm. um, and Christ wants us to get, he wants us to get out of that tradition. You know, that's one thing that the Pharisees and, and, and the, the Sadducees was so, um, that, that, that was so distasteful to God because they were so caught up in, um, they was simple things like washing your hands and, mm -hmm. You know, eating the show bread, the shoe bread, and, and things like that. And um, God don't, God, God do not want us to get caught up in tradition when tradition is superseding what God says. And that's what we can do sometimes. We, I, when, tra when tra some tradition are good, but when mm -hmm. when tradition starts to supersede what God said, mm -hmm. then you 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 have to get rid of that. You 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 can't you can't. So you know, and that, and that's just that's just one of the things. Um, that we have to look at what's what's holding us back, um, in which I came up with tradition. That's one thing that's holding us back. What's some what's some other thing you think that's hold us hold us back from counting the cost? Fear. Yeah. Like when you just to add to um, you know, staying within the four walls, the word says to go out and make disciples of all nations. Mm -hmm. How are you gonna make disciples of people who already came to Christ? If right. we only did work inside the church, we're in a building of believers mm -hmm. who are already right under the knowledge that, hey, this is important. I need to run this race. Mm -hmm. So we can't have a fear. You know, sometimes we fear judgment. Mm -hmm. We fear what people will think. Like I give you an example right now. I'm working on uh, my assignment is at a, a property. And a young lady came in about there uh, being a judgment on her credit report. You know, you all sent me to collections. And you can see the potential for the turn up. Like she was bubbling, bubbling, bubbling. Mm -hmm. And to the point where she started crying. Mm -hmm. Now, I could have missed the opportunity to be like, hey, she mad. Let me let her cool down for a second. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I said, you know, your spirit, your discernment will build. Mm -hmm. And I told her, I said, I don't know if you're a praying person. I said, but if you are, do you mind if I pray with you? And she said, please do. Mm -hmm. By the time we finished, I learned that she was a minister. She was just going through a tough, tough time where it with a sick parent and so much on her plate. Mm -hmm. So we can't be fearful because that could be the very olive branch somebody needs to reel them back in. Amen. She's human. She's in here about to flip out and go off on mm -hmm. everybody. Mm -hmm. But if you don't walk in fear and you just realize that we have an assignment, and the cost of that assignment sometimes is going to be taking that chance that somebody's going to say, I don't need you praying for me. No, you know, Amen. that's just a, that's part of the cost. But you have to have that boldness to do what God has called you to do. Amen. 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 And understanding the word, because I think we are. I think we ought to know that when we're walking with Christ, some things are hard to stomach sometimes, even in the word where you it, but even in the word of God, you can mm -hmm. read it. And you and you're like, man, that's a hard saying, Lord. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can read that that's a hard saying, but God began to tell me that it's a hard saying because sometimes we 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 lack the understanding. Right. We let we 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 lack the understanding of it. You know, it, we we truly lack the understand uh, understanding of the word sometimes because he was not breaking up families. Mm -hmm. Right. But he was he was breaking up the concept of what people thought family was supposed to be. Right. He actually defined it a little. Uh, he actually defined it better mm -hmm. um, than than what we as human can define family as. So it was not to break up family, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, but it was to uh, 
establish fleshly belief to spiritual beliefs. Right. And it, it's a separation in that because it, you know, the word said it's a way that is right, right, seemingly right to to us, but that's not the way God intended for it to be for us to go. Right. And I think it's only hard when you don't accept that God has an expected end. See, we have a fear right. of the unknown. Mm -hmm. Things are hard to us because we don't know how it's going to turn out. Right. But as you grow your faith and you know that God only desires to prosper us and not harm us, right. you'll be able to go forth in those assignments with confidence. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Like I say, in all you're getting, get an understanding. understanding. Amen. 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 I think that is all the time that we have today. What a great word. We'll give ourselves a hand. We thank God for this His word tonight. Amen. Amen. And we will, we will we do not want to forget a time in the world with Dr. Sarah Her Williams. Um that's that's every that's every Sunday morning at six o'clock. Every Wednesday at 10 p.m. Um it's a great word coming from uh First Lady on uh, her, so First Lady Her Williams. So I would encourage everyone to check her out, and, th and that would be on WATC Channel 57. That's WATC Channel 57, and it's just a continuation of great words um, coming out of the Straight Life Pentecostal Incorporated Church. And uh, we would like to invite everybody out on Sundays. Um, in your free time, if you're available, come out and check us out. Um, the Word of God is really coming down and it's really blessing. So we would love to uh, see you here and uh, just um, in part, just just uh, be a part of this uh, great congregation, this great Word. Uh, with that said, I'm going to have Sister Aaron to pray us out. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we want to say thank you, Father God. We bless your holy name, Father God, and we thank you for these opportunities, Father God, to get understanding, Lord God. We thank you for the wisdom that you continue to impart upon us, Lord God. Lord, we pray that your word, Father God, and we know that your word has served every purpose, Father God, that you sent it forth to serve. We want to thank you for those viewing via live stream, Father God. We just pray that you continue to bless us all with your knowledge and your wisdom, Lord God. These and all things we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank God.